Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Lionel, and welcome to Don't Look. You heard me right. Don't look. You are going to be going through this playthrough without opening your eyes. Remember, don't look. All right? You got your eyes closed? Got those peepers all, like, peeped out? All right. Good. Let's get into this. What's my name? My name is Lionel. What are my pronouns? It's Captain, but he, him works. Lionel. Such a wonderful name. The day I first saw you, I promised myself i never let this world hurt you. I know you don't understand now, but you will. Shh, it's okay. You don't have to worry, little moth. I'm going to take good care of you. Let me make the right choices for you. Let me love you with all that I am. And trust that I will take care of you. Your head was pounding as you regained consciousness. Your whole body felt weak. You slowly tried to open your eyes, only to find you still couldn't see anything. There was something covering your eyes that was wrapped tight around your head. What's happening? Where am I? I can't see anything. You tried to sit up, but as you got part way up, your wrists were tugged backwards. It appears you were attached to something. Uh, I guess I'm a uh, stay quiet. I mean, there's no point in screaming. You weren't sure if it was from fear of someone hearing you or the fear that someone won't. You decided to just stay quiet and as calm as possible. As you sit there, waiting for any kind of change, you take note of what you can sense in this room. It was dusty with a slight damp smell. You could hear the slight whir of some kind of ventilation system and the air was quite cold against your skin, but not freezing. Your hands did their best to flatten out against whatever you were sat on it didn't feel like a cold concrete floor. Quite the opposite. It felt like a soft, comfortable bedspread. Guys, what are we doing on the bed? You can only assume you were on some kind of makeshift bed in a creepy person's basement. Another sound caught your attention. It was the sound of footsteps coming closer. A lump formed in your throat from the sound, your body tensing as you prepared for what you could only assume was your captor to enter the room. Oh, I hated that. You soon heard the loud opening of a door to the far left of the room. Oh, you're awake. How are you feeling, little moth? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, how are you doing today? You hear them walking closer to you before you feel their presence sitting across from you. The sound of a tray being put down catches your attention, as well as the smell of hot food. I'm glad you're awake. I've been looking forward to talking to you properly. You've been asleep for nearly a whole day. Whoa, really? God, I must have been exhausted. Ah, oh, where are my manners? I'm Zachary. Nice to meet you at last, my little ma. Hello, Zachary, Ubu. Are you here to nuzzle and pounce on me? <laughs> oh god, what am I doing? The guy didn't sound particularly terrifying. He actually seems quite polite, but I still need to be careful. Uh, I guess I'll tell him my name. Um, my name is Lionel. How are you doing? Well, I already know that, but it's still cute to be polite. Aw, thank you, Zaki. Aw, Zaki, my boy. You probably have a lot of questions. And I'm an open book, so ask away. Uh, are you single? Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> okay, where am I? Why did you bring me here? Are you gonna kill me? Uh, where am I? From your own research, you couldn't tell much about the area you're in. But maybe he'd be courteous enough to grant you some kind of insight. You're in my bunker. Sorry it's not the best, but you'll be allowed upstairs soon enough. Ah, good. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Zaki boy. It didn't sound like he was lying, but that was even more terrifying. Why did he leave me blindfolded if he kidnapped me? He was currently talking to me like I wasn't going to be let go anytime soon, so why the secrecy? Are you hungry? I made you mac and cheese. I'll have to feed you, so come closer and open up. Ooh, you're gonna be feeding me, Zaki? Of course I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you. <laughs> oh, I'm a comply. Hell yeah. You scoot yourself closer and open your mouth for him to feed you. Ah, uh, see? How does it taste? I've always been told to make a good mac and cheese. Oh god, it is scrum diddly umptious. You couldn't deny it. This was insanely good mac and cheese. You felt a little embarrassed at how quickly you opened your mouth for more. 
Pretty soon, you heard the tray being moved away from you, and Zachary stood up. Oh, like seriously? Well, that's our time for today, little moth. I gotta head out, so you two just have fun, okay? I love you. Love you too, Zachy. Uh, uh, wait, the two? Who's the other one? I thought I was the only one. Zach, Zach, come back here. Get your ass back here. And just like that, the footsteps left the room and the door closed behind him. Part of you was relieved that he left, but something he said sounded off. What does he mean, the two of us? Um, are you okay? A voice caught you off guard. You almost jumped out of your skin, not expecting another person to start speaking. Yeah, who's there? I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Zack told me to be quiet until you'd settled in. Well, yes, yeah, Zack is quite the gentleman. And who are you? I thought I was the only one that Zack wanted. I thought he loved me. His voice sounded like another captive by the tone. Also, his obedience to listen to Zachary. He must have been here since you first arrived. Does that mean he just sat there during everything that just happened? Did he want Zacky boy feed me? I'm not happy about that. Uh, okay. Um, I guess I'll I'll be courteous and ask, who are you? Okay. You sound pretty scared too. Uh, me? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. My name is Chester, by the way. Ah, being one of the many captives was definitely a little unnerving. How many more people had this guy kidnapped? What does he want with us? So, um, I believe he wants to be in a relationship with us? No! Zaki is mine! He's had a couple of partners before I got here. I think we're just his latest crushes. At least from what he's told me. Mmm, I see, I see. The word crushes almost makes me vomit. Like this was some innocent feelings towards someone when in, in fact, Zaki is mine. None of you can have him, Zach's mine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so sorry for those of you who are watching this. Uh, <laughs> but nothing was innocent about a kidnapping. You could only imagine what happened to the partners he had before you and Chester. What happened to the others? Some of them were um gotten rid of. If you disobey him, then he tends to get violent. But if you're polite, he's just as polite back. So what I'm saying here is that I have to get you to disobey. And I get to have Zaki all to myself. I see. All right. Let the games begin, Chester. I think that's why he keeps me alive. Because I just do what he says. Well, I, I guess it's one of the reasons. I mean, I hope to God you're cute. So at least that would give me some sense of sparing you, my dear boy. Well, thank you for the reassurance. You're welcome. I'm sorry there's not much more that I can do. Yeah, his voice made it sound hopeless. Chester just sounded like he was already used to this kind of situation. You weren't sure if you felt more sorry for him or yourself. What's with this little moth thing? You keep calling me Little Moth. What does that mean? Oh, he gives us all bug nicknames. He calls me Bumblebee. Are you serious? You got the cuter name, Chester? <sighs> Nothing he said sounded reassuring. You were starting to think, maybe this was entirely hopeless. Maybe I might not get a chance with Zack, but maybe I could just eliminate the competition. Are you blindfolded too? Not anymore. Zack let me take off my blindfold a few weeks ago. Why does he keep us blindfolded? I, I'm not entirely sure. He seems to think it's some kind of... trust thing? Uh, I don't really know. Well, okay then. It, so, if you're good, he might take your blindfold off? That's something to keep in mind. You felt slightly powerless without some kind of sight. It felt like your perspective of the world was askew from the lack of certainty. Questions filled your mind about the space around you the people you just met, and the things you had yet to know about. You were about to ask another question when Chester interrupted your train of thought. We should probably get some sleep. Zack won't be back for a while, and there's not much else we can do. With nothing else to do, you listen to Chester's advice, shuffling down to lay as best as you could with your shackles bound behind your back. You slowly go to sleep, and even though it was uncomfortable, at some point you manage to fall unconscious. Oh, we're already on day two. Damn. Okay. You woke up at some point later, with a blindfold on, 
It was almost impossible to tell at the time. However, you surprisingly felt well rested. Your body rolled to sit yourself up. You think at this point the blindfold would have at least loosened up. However, it was just as tight around your head and your vision still impaired. The sound of that heavy door opening caught you off guard for a moment, making you jump slightly. Hey there, love bugs. Oh, you're both up. I got you some water. Oh, thank you, Zachy. Uh, you heard Zachary walking towards you, feeling him tilt your chin up a little and press the open bottle of water to your lips. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drink it. Hell yeah, I'm gonna drink it. You eagerly allowed him to pour water into your mouth. You drank it down with little hesitation or care for how pathetic you must have looked right now. <laughs> Good little mouth. You need to keep your strength up. That's it. You can finish the bottle. Oh, thank you. I'll be your good little moth any day. You were unsure if you were regretting your decision or wholeheartedly stand by it. The outcome was certainly shaping the future of your unwilling stay here. What do you mean unwilling? I'm not stuck here with Zack. Zack is stuck with me. You both okay? Do you need anything else? Could I have another blanket? It's getting t too cold down here. Of course, my bumblebee. Anything for you. How about you, little mouth? Do you want anything? I want a hug. Um, like, I want a blanket too. Could I also have a blanket? You can. You both deserve to stay warm and snuggled. Oh, thank you, Zaki. Oh, he moved to give Chester water before standing back up and heading off to grab blankets for you and Chester. He thankfully didn't take too long and retrieves the blankets quite quickly, wrapping one around Chester before coming over to you. There we go. That's better, right? Yes. Thank you, Zaki. The blanket around you was so warm and it felt like it was fresh out of the dryer. It was slightly warm against your skin. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything for you. Aww. After Zachary left, it was just you and Chester alone in the bunker. Okay. Um, I will talk to Chester. He decided that talking to Chester would be your best option for now. Maybe some insight from someone else will be comforting. So, how did you end up here? Did he kidnap you too? I don't really remember much. Uh, but I remember that Zack was a good guy that I'd seen at my work. He used to come in a lot and, and he was kind of flirtatious, but, but he was nice. Uh, I was working late, so I had to lock myself up one night and... Uh, and I just remember being hit over the head, and and then I woke up here. Ah, uh, I see. Quite tragic. I I guess I'll comfort him. I'm really sorry that happened to you. It's okay. I, I'm also sorry that you're in this situation, too. What do you mean, sorry? I love this. Talking to Chester was certainly enlightening. You were kind of glad you had another person to talk to while you were here. Being alone, you felt like you could go crazy. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll feel around my bed. You shuffle back to feel around the area that you're sleeping on. It's a firm mattress with a few blankets. You have a couple of somewhat comfortable pillows to sleep on. It feels like he's at least attempting to make this area comfortable. You felt around the wall behind you and felt something sharp touch your hand. Thankfully, it didn't break the skin, but it felt like it could. Well, I guess I'm going to feel it more. I might die from this, but whatever. You do your best to feel the sharp object without cutting yourself and notice it's a sharp piece of metal. It seems to be stuck in the wall. Uh, huh. Do I want to cut myself free? No, there's no point in that. Like, hell. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. I decide it's not worth investigating any further. Explore the area. You scoot along your bed, trying to get as far as you can until the chains become top. You were now sat on the edge of your makeshift bed, unable to move any further due to the shackles. You reached around the area in front of you with your legs, seeing if you could reach something with your foot. Your foot hits a hard surface. You felt like some kind of cupboard with a handle. Huh. I... Uh... I guess I'll open the cupboard! Oh my god! You, f you use your foot to angle upwards and pull open the cupboard. You hear the sound of a glass bottle hitting the floor and rolling towards you. You were surprised it didn't smash, but you used your feet to pull the bottle up to you and onto your lap. You couldn't quite tell what it was, but you could tell it was kind of full. What is this? Chester, can you tell me what I found? Th that's... cyanide. 
he has a lot of bottles in those cupboards. Uh, cyanide? Why is he keeping this? Apparently it can be used in making paper. He writes and and makes his own books. Oh, that's, that's, cool. that's cool. What a weird thing to keep down here. A bottle of literal poison. But then again, you couldn't complain now that you have something of use. You do your best to roll the bottle up the bed and tuck it back behind your mattress on the floor. It could come in handy. Uh, I guess I'll go to sleep. I mean, there's no point in trying to escape. I'm, I'm vibing with this. That's enough investigation for one day. You assume there might not be anything of interest to you and decide to rest in your makeshift bed for more sleep. Night 2 As you are attempting to get some sleep, you feel something on your back. Something light is touching you. You barely register it in your sleepy state, but as the patterns keep repeating, you definitely know something is touching you. Um, I'm not going to do anything. Nope. As you lay there and take note of the feeling, you slowly realize its fingers tracing along your skin. It must be Chester. You wait for a little while to try and figure out what he's writing. Six, seven, two, zero, three. He soon stops and you hear him shuffle back to his own bed. Six, seven, two, or three. What does that mean? How was he able to write down your back? Without much more context, you try and remember those numbers as you fall asleep. Day three. It's still in development? Ah! thank you so much for playing so far. I hope the game was enticing. We're really proud of our efforts so far. If you'd like to continue to support our game's development, please check out our Discord, Patreon, and Itch.io for details. Links can be found on our Twitter page. Don't look VN. Please check out all the links in our credits to show support for our team too. A lot of them are working on their own games. Thank you from all of us from the Don't Look Visual Novel team for testing our game. See you soon, little moths. I'm going back. All right, I guess we'll try the other endings. At least I want to see what's going on. So I'm going to cut off my blindfold. You shuffle down to be hovering around where the sharp metal lodged out of the wall. You try to steady yourself on your shoulder, putting all your body weight down onto it as you lower your head towards the metal. As you're leaning, however, your body starts to shake. You lean your head down further until you suddenly feel the metal against your eyelid. It catches you off guard. Before you can pull back, you slip on your bed sheets and impale your eye sockets into the metal. Yeah! Blood poured from your eye socket, seeping into your mouth and nose, turning your screams into a gurgle. Chester's panicked yells were faint and fading. It sounded like he was calling for you. Maybe Zack? You can tell. You feel initial sharp, agonizing pain until you feel nothing at all. Uh, I died, but there are more secrets to discover. Uh, okay. Well, I think that's a happy note to end this video on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I'm actually looking forward to what this game is going to look like when it finally releases. And hey, if you guys want to see more of these videos, definitely subscribe to your channel. And if you want to suggest a game I should play, definitely let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. Would definitely love to check it out. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. And I will see you in the next one. This is Lionel, signing out. Ciao.